T plus 40 seconds. It's one hell of a sight from here. We see it arcing right over top of us. We see 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it starts to ascend skyward. Coming up on maximum aerodynamic pressure, then only about a minute and a half until we get into hot staging. Wow, Dan, that was incredible. <laughs> we could feel the building shaking here, feel the, the vehicle's power. Now we're just about a minute away from shutting down those engines on the booster. Again, this booster is flying for its second time today. All right, so hot staging coming up a little under a minute. We're going to see all but the three center engines turn off on the booster. So our version of Miko, most engines cut off. And then just a few seconds later, hoping to see six engines ignite on ship to push it away. All right, hot staging, about 30 seconds. And definitely keep an eye on which way the booster flips. First ever directional flip we're going for today should flip straight up. See those engines powering down? Booster engine cutoff. Ship ignition. Stage separation. Incredible flip by Super Heavy Booster, and you can see those six engines, those three engines on the ship ignited. Six healthy Raptors <laughs> running on ship on its way to space. Peak that engine view. Booster doing the boost back. Chris, how's it looking over there at Hawthorne, man? It is looking. Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. It is looking absolutely incredible here in Hawthorne. As we said, six healthy engines on ship. We've got 13 out of 13 engines on the booster. Now down to those three, which is what we expect in the final moments of the boost back burn. Now, as a reminder, we are not recovering the super heavy booster today. We are instead going to do booster some... Boost back, shut down. And there we had a good shutdown of the boost back burn. Next up will be the jettison of that hot stage ship ring. avionics power and telemetry nominal. Great call out there that everything looking nominal aboard the super heavy vehicle, which is returning to Earth. And we're going to be doing some experiments with it, including a higher angle of attack re-entry, uh, as well as some engine tests as it gets closer to the Gulf. We are, again, because of these tests not recovering it, we are sending it to the Gulf on purpose to do those tests. But again, you see the booster on the left-hand side of your screen. You see ship with six healthy engines continuing its ascent to its planned suborbital trajectory. Uh, everything going very well so far for Starship's ninth flight. Now uh, four minutes, 15 seconds in. Great views from inside of the uh, aft engine area of ship there, looking at those uh, three sea level and three Raptor engines on the right-hand side of your screen. The booster doing its locks dump, that liquid oxygen dump. So because we don't need some of that liquid oxygen propellant in its tanks, we vent that propellant out to lessen the booster's mass as it comes in for its landing. Just absolutely gorgeous views watching these two vehicles do their respective things in the skies over Texas here today. And Dan, we're approaching the five minute mark into the flight. Super Heavy is descending rapidly. Uh, what can we expect here in the next few minutes as it does no, its I'm atmospheric directly. tests? Yeah, now as we had talked about, Super Heavy might not have a very smooth ride down. We're gonna be putting <laughs> it through this higher angle of attack. So we're kind of pitching it up a tiny bit, increasing drag. We've done this in wind tunnels. We've done this in computer modeling. It shows that sometimes the control isn't great, uh, but only one way to really prove it out, and that's to get real world data. So here comes Super Heavy. It should be igniting for its landing burn in just about 40 seconds from now. 
And we are going to relight 13 engines, then bring that down to three engines. As, as, as we talked about earlier, we will be intentionally Pretty shutting sure down. We will be shutting down one of those three center engines intentionally to push the limits of the super heavy booster. Ship Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. And continuing to see six healthy engines on the ship, three sea level and three vacuum engines still ignited as the super heavy booster is making its way back down to earth. We can see those grid fins doing some heavy work. Booster landing start up. Ignited for our landing burn. It may have ended with that landing burn. Does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? So the booster's flight ending before it was able to get through landing burn, but again, we are not bringing that back. We we're expecting it to make a hard splash down in the Gulf. We were getting live data back the entire time through that high angle of attack flight. So that was something that was really vital for us to get during this reuse. First free flight of booster in the books. All right, ship has about two minutes left. Yeah, in about two minutes, we expect all six Raptor engines to shut down. That will be Seco basically second engine or second stage engine shut off. And these are some incredible views, Dan, from the aft end of the ship, watching as the engines stay ignited with the earth in the background. As always, the Starship avionics team, the techs. I think we just heard the <laughs> booster, uh, but... All right, we got about a minute left into this burn. All eyes definitely on ship as we get through the final stages into its ascent. We're expecting it to start to cut those engines off in about 45 seconds. Terminal guidance. All right, just about 30 seconds to go. We're in terminal guidance. In the final stages of this ascent burn. We did see shutdown of the Raptor engines. We do stagger these, so we do the Raptors first. Those three have shut down successfully. Sea level's still running. Ship engine cut off. Ship, Ship engine cut insertion. off. The three most beautiful words in the English language. And great call out that we had nominal insertion. <sighs> An incredible flight test so far today. We reflew a super heavy booster for the very first time in nine test flights. Ship is in its orbital trajectory. Again, it's going to remain suborbital for its mission today. But it ignited all it ignited all six of its engines and made it all the way through Seco just now. What a moment. <laughs> huh. Incredible. All right. But I mean, that's ooh, still lots to come for the rest of this flight. Uh, per usual, I need to collect myself. Uh, hey, Chris, how's it going over there in Hawthorne, man? How's everybody doing? I think the elation and the excitement and the happiness at what uh, we just saw achieved uh, carried through across all of our sites. Uh, what? 
an incredible view to see Starship back orbiting the Earth uh, just under 11 minutes into our mission. Absolutely exciting to see all of this and super pumped, especially to see all of the team's hard work in action here today. As guaranteed, it has been an exciting evening so far for Starship's ninth test flight. We lifted off a little bit after 6.30 p.m. after a couple of holds that, we, that were triggered at the T minus 40 second mark, but we were able to clear those one on the Raptor, one on the tower, and we were able to lift off successfully from Starbase. 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on the Super Heavy, all six engines lit on ship, bringing it to its planned suborbital trajectory around Earth. But as Dan said, we've got a lot still coming up in our flight sequence. So coming up at about T plus 18 minutes, 26 seconds, we'll have the first deployment of simulated Starlink satellites planned from Starship. That will be followed at about T plus 37 minutes and 49 seconds by the relight of a single Raptor sea level engine in space. This is gonna help us gather data on our ability to do a deorbit burn for future Starship missions that will go orbital. And then of course, one of the biggest tests yet to come is the new heat shield modifications to Starship. And that'll start with re-entry into Earth's atmosphere at about the T plus 45 minute mark, which should take about 16, 18 minutes to complete. And now today's re-entry is going to test that heat shield like we said, uh, specifically how Starship will hold up to 100 missing heat shield tiles on its thermal protection system. Now, we purposely took those 100 tiles off over very critical areas of the vehicle to be able to safely test on a flight like this suborbital trajectory into the Indian Ocean what might happen on an operational flight in those areas if we were to lose the primary heat shield tile over Starship. So very critical test coming up. And then after that, we'll have the final descent where we will again be pushing Starship to its limits. We definitely pushed the booster to its limits today to gather data, and we're gonna be doing the exact same thing on that ship, seeing how the ship handles various flight conditions that we will need it to fly in as we look to one day soon bring ships back to Starbase for catch and reuse. Now. While there are payload simulators on Starship for deployment today, as we will see in a few minutes, the primary data and payload, the primary payload for today is the data. And today, just like with Starship's previous test flights, that data is coming to us courtesy of our Starlink network. In fact, it is from Starlink that you are seeing these wonderful views of ship in space right now. So, um, and I can't wait to see Star, uh, Starlink really provide those epic views and that data transmission during reentry, which is very, very critical to getting that data during reentry. So, Dan and Jesse, it's been an exciting day so far. There's more to come uh, as we get ready for Starship's first ever payload deploy. What can we expect next year in the next few minutes? Thanks, Chris. Just going to reiterate, thank you to the Starlink team for these incredible views today. In a few minutes, Starship will deploy eight Starlink simulators similar in size to our next generation Starlink satellites. The Starlink simulators will be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship, meaning they will passively re-enter the atmosphere just like Starship. With tests like these, we can see how Starship's payload deploy systems work in flight while ensuring that the simulator satellites pose no safety risk to people on Earth or for other other satellites in orbit. Now this also ensures that any parts of these simulator Starlink satellites that do survive re-entry splash down harmlessly in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And then before we get there though, we're gonna have to open up that payload deploy door. Um, so we've only ever done that one time before. Pretty sure it was flight three, someone on the internet, please check me. Uh, but that was the only time we ever opened it. And we've had Starlink simul simulators on the last two flights, but we just, we haven't gotten to this moment yet where we're able to open up the payload door and start deploying these. Um, it's it's gonna be pretty cool. We've got them stacked inside of the Starship payload bay. Um, and we'll have potentially a couple of views. You saw one camera pop up. Oh, there we go. Look, look inside of the <laughs> payload bay of Starship. You can see them stacked down in the middle of your view. There's kind of four on either side. So they're sandwiched on top of each other, a stack of four right behind each other. And then we're going to pop the door open. It's on the right side of your screen. So we'll see that open up and then start firing those Starlink simulators out into space. We are expecting the payload door to open in a little over a minute from now. 
And then once that payload door is open, about a couple minutes later is when we will start start dispensing those yeah, Starlink similars. What a, a great right view. at the bottom <laughs> of the stack. So should be, should be able to see them kind of firing out from right there. So really cool. And eventually these, these are going to carry dozens of the next generation of Starlink satellite into space. And those are going to enable some truly insane things in terms of speeds from space uh, and what we're able to what we're able to do it starlink's been really great for starship obviously uh getting live video back is really cool but just the amount of high speed telemetry everything we're able to get back is insane and for a development program that's kind of everything <laughs> uh, we're in excess of 100 and 130 or 160 my numbers are fuzzy right now just like my brain is uh, but well in excess of 100 megabits per second of downlink and a lot of that gets eaten up by video we've got dozens of cameras across starship we added several more um, for this flight you saw a couple of those as we have essentially 360 degrees Oop. open the pod bay door hal <laughs> Now we are expecting the payload door to op open any moment now. So we're watching out for that. Again, you're looking at the inside of Starship as it's suborbital. Well, we heard the door open was in progress. It was unable to actuate all the way open, so they are going to close it back up. Hal told me no. He said, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. Can't do that. Looks like we won't get the door open today. But that's okay. This, this is, is obviously test. a test we want to be able to do before we're deploying full-on Starlinks. But the real focus for this now that we are in space is getting to that re-entry. That is the most critical phase of Starship that we still have to prove out. All right, well, so it does look like we're not gonna be able to deploy Starlinks today, um, but we should have pretty frequent views from Starship. They might cut in and out um, every once in a while.